Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. And what happens when you have an absence of light? Well, you have darkness. And who's called uh, the Prince of Darkness? No, it's not Dracula. You know, it's a. Uh, I read the uh, following verse, the book of Job, chapter 10, and verse 22. I think of America when I read this. Well, Europe too. A land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. Woo. Here's another good one. Proverbs 419. Proverbs was written by Solomon, the king, son of David. And uh, he was supposed to be the wisest man that ever lived, per the scriptures. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. See, they stumble at God's word. I was actually considering naming my book uh, Days of Darkness. Isaiah 520 comes to mind. Woe unto them that call evil good. Boy, we have a lot of that now, huh? Pride festivals for those that do what the Lord calls an abomination. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you could write me and I'll explain it in more detail. But uh, yeah, pride, you know, with a rainbow thingy. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. But on a lighter note, Isaiah 9, 2, the people that walked in darkness, that's our people, the people that have, uh, that walked in darkness have seen a great light, the light of life, Jesus. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, spiritual death, upon them hath the light shined. Oh, yeah. Uh the uh, modern church world will tell you that the day of the Lord is the second coming of Christ for judgment upon the wicked. And then the denominational world will tell you that the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture that happens before the tribulation. No, it's not. The day of the Lord and the day of uh, Christ is the same event. It's the day of the Lord if you're not in Christ but it's the day of Christ. If you are in the Lord, it will be a day of salvation. But you are, if those who are not in Christ, it will be a day of judgment and destruction. But by saying that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two separate events, are they not denying that Jesus Christ is Lord? By saying the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different things? I think so. But the, uh, the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 31, records the following. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Now, is that in the uh, New Testament? Yeah, I think so. In the book of Acts 2 and verse 20, it is affirmed, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. In Revelation 6 and verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as 
blood. So there you go. Let's read a little bit from Amos chapter 5, uh, verse 6. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph. Remember, Joseph was one of the tribes of Israel. Lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Beth means house, and El has reference to God. So Bethel means house of God. Uh, let's see. And remember, first the Lord destroyed the earth in a flood of water. The next time it's going to be a flood of fire. So, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, and that, uh, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress." They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor, or hate, him that speaketh uprightly. You know, those that tell the truth, the ways of the Lord, they, they hate those people. Verse 11, For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, see, they, they don't have enough in this world, so they steal from the poor, and you take from him burdens of wheat, Ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know of your manifold transgressions. Manifold, meaning many. And your mighty sins. They afflict, afflict the just. They take a bribe. You ever heard of a judge when a case comes before him? In law and he takes a bribe from the rich man and the and the poor man who's in the right loses everything well you're not gonna be able to bribe the Lord God of heaven and earth the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you might be able to bribe a judge in a black robe on the earth but you're not gonna be able to bribe the God of heaven They afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Maybe I should take that advice, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. 14. Amos 5. 14. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil. We're supposed to hate evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are, as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord." Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. See, the day of the Lord is judgment upon the wicked people. Remember that. Verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. 
Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. Boy, what a what a what a warning for the wicked. In Zephaniah, Z E P H A N I A H one fifteen, that day, the day of the Lord, that, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. But on a lighter note, in Matthew 4, 16, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, Christ, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. In John 3.19, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Hmm. In John 12.46, Jesus said, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in in darkness. Ephesians 6 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Think about election day, people. Oh, yeah. All right, I think about doing a new series on uh, stones versus rocks. You know, it's uh, kind of a, to me, it's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it works. So this concludes darkness versus light. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.